Hey everybody, hope you're all doing alright out there. So recently I've been building up this little motorcycle travel toolkit to take with me if I go green laning, if I'm on a motorcycle review, if I'm going to go on a long trip on my bike. It's nice to know what tools you have with you every time. Now the reason I say that is because I do motorcycle reviews, I'm lent the bikes for a week or two at a time, and I never know what bike has what. Normally, I don't need to get the tools out on a motorcycle review, it doesn't happen, but recently I did have an electric bike, funny enough, this is the funny thing about this, it wasn't even a mechanical issue, I had an electric bike, the RGNT, which as I mentioned had some software bugs, which has been fixed in the software now, but anyway, it had a freeze up in the menus basically, and the bike needed to be turned on and off, and the switch to do that is underneath the seat, and the seat is bolted down, and I had no tools with me, and it doesn't appear to have a toolkit on it. And I was stuck, so I had to push the bike for about a mile, um, and then undo the seat and sort it out, no problem. But this goes beyond electric bikes, obviously. Some of the modern adventure bikes, their toolkit consists of a double-ended screwdriver and a single Allen key. That's it, nothing else. And it's insane for a bike like that, the idea that you're gonna go a long way on it, you know, maybe go out right into the sticks, and the toolkit they supply for it is awful. Especially when you keep in mind, in the past, such as this toolkit that came with my DRZ 400SM, which is like a 2007, lots of bikes of the past came with a very standard toolkit like this. Now, I actually think that belongs to my XJ6, and there is something missing from this, but this is very reasonable to show the representation of the sorts of tools that you used to get with bikes as standard. So there's a little pair of pliers, which actually extend out for larger sizes, and there's also a wire cutter in it. You've got 10, 12, 14, 17 mil, 22, 24 uh, ring spanners, this is a hook to adjust the preload on your suspension on the rear, and I think that's actually for my XJ6. I didn't think that came with the DR, but whatever. This is an extension handle for these, so you can get a bit more leverage on it, because obviously with wheel nuts, it's quite difficult, but if you get a foot on that, you'll be all right. There's also this thing, which I believe is like an Allen key. Hold on a second, correction. I have just realized, although yes, you could use this like an Allen key, I was looking at the other end of it when I was editing this video, and I suddenly realized that's a 10 mil socket, isn't it? What's on the other end? That's an eight mil socket. So it does actually have the tools to take the bodywork off in the kit. But I will say, the reason I didn't notice, because I only ever looked at this end, which is extremely rounded. If you offer it up to a nut, it might take it off, but I wouldn't want to use that. So yes, Suzuki did actually have a tool in the kit and I was completely wrong about that. And I make a couple of mistakes in this video saying about how you can't take the bodywork off, but it's not brilliant. And I guess I should also point out now that the standard toolkit used to fit in a bag on the back of the DR here, but I don't have that on here because I like the looks of it without it. Yes, looks over function, stupid, I know. There's also a part missing out of here for my bike for the DRZ that specifically is for it. Because the spark plug is down the hole, it's got this little angled adapter which goes in and then stands up and you can get a spanner on it, but whatever, that's, that's not really important in this. I'm just pointing out that it's missing. Uh, and you also have the double-ended screwdriver which is pretty standard amongst all the kits. I don't know why there's an extra one that's so big and fat, other than the fact that it fits in there and it has a slightly different head on it. So that is the sort of toolkit that you used to get with most motorcycles. It looks great, you can do loads of jobs with this. Although you actually can't, because sure, you can take wheels off and you can adjust the chain and stuff like that, but if you were stuck out in the sticks, all of the bolts that hold the bodywork on the DRZ are eight millimeters and they're down in holes and there's um, there's some Allens as well, and there's some there's basically fasteners to get down in to fix the bike that weren't included in this, which would have left you stranded just as badly because you wouldn't have been able to get the body work off. So that's where I came up with the idea of this toolkit to replace all the jobs that that kit could do because that covers most bikes, but also include a few extra things that would help me a lot more than what those sorts of toolkits do. And if I'm on a bike with no toolkit, well then I should have everything I need to do whatever I need at the side of the road. Now keep in mind, my aim with this is not world travel. It's not thousands of miles across the desert from anywhere. This is about being in the UK, and if I can't fix the bike, I can just get recovery. But it's also if I'm down in a green lane and something happens, like you know, I snap my clutch cable, I can make a new cable or fix whatever it is at the bottom of the lane and get back out. Even if I can't get home on the fix, at least if I can get the bike out the lane, I can get recovery. So do keep that in mind. But if you're like a weekend rider or you go on trips and you don't want to take a load of tools with you, then something like this might be quite good. Do remember that every time you add functionality to something, you're going to make it heavier and bigger, and, and of course you can keep pushing that, and then you end up with a full trailer behind you. 
This case is just a random case that I happen to own, and uh, it could probably do with being very, very slightly bigger at this point, but I think I'm almost there. And there may be some better options that, if any of you have seen any like multi-tools or, or little travel toolkits which are really good and compact, then let me know because I'd be really interested in that. So what I've got in here is a little pair of needle nose pliers because that gives me wire cutting, it gives me pliers, okay they're not huge pliers but they are pliers, but I also get needle nose pliers which allows me to do things like sir clips and you know split pins and stuff like that. Very handy to have something with needle noses, way more useful than something like this. These I already owned, they're very cheap but they'll do the job and they're small, they're the smallest pair I own. Then we've got the standard wheel wrenches, as in the, the wheel nut wrenches. I've got these because I can't think of anything else which can remove wheels that's as small as this, uh, other than a bigger adjustable spanner maybe, but then you haven't got the leverage. This is actually quite a good solution. The only thing that concerns me is it's got 22 and 24 mil, and I'm sure a lot of bikes use 19s if they're like 125s, so that's an issue because my ranges of millimetres I can cover goes up to 15 and then starts again at 20. Two. But obviously I have to get wheel nuts off to do so many jobs so it's really important to have something like that with you. I've also got the adjustable spanner and that's what I'm saying about um, up to 15 millimeters. Yes independent spanners are much better but this gives you the option of having from 1 to 15 mil spanners with just one thing. A couple of things to say about this toolkit. I do really like it uh, but I had to fix something with it and I also had to improve it in a way which is this. Nice and silent, right? That's because I added in this piece of foam, which does normally sit at the top. If you don't have that, yeah, it's very annoying. This is a little mini ratchet set, which has many different heads and sockets and things. It is two-way, with a little switch on it. It actually seems to be okay. Like, it doesn't feel too cheap, but I haven't tried to undo anything in great angle with it. Maybe I should do that before I rely on it, but you know, this is a starting point. Uh, and it also comes with this adapter, which doesn't lock into here, it just presses in. So you just gotta hold it in there. And then that has a little head on it that you can take, for instance, one of your Allen heads, push that in there, it locks in, won't come out, and then you just pull this little collar back and then it comes out. Great little design. However, when I bought this from Amazon, when I put the first one of these in here, it got about that far and then got wedged and would not come back out. I had to wrench it out. And what actually was the problem is inside here, there's a little angled cut on a tube and they hadn't deburred it. And that burr was causing all sorts of problems. It's a very easy design to fix because it's got a little retainer clip here, this little housing with a spring, and then another clip on the other side. And I basically took it apart, got some small files, bit of sandpaper, took the burrs out, and now it functions absolutely perfectly. And I'm very happy with it because it was very cheap. But had I bought this and not been able to fix it that easily, uh, I might be quite mad about it. So that, I don't know, I didn't look at the reviews on it, but if they're mixed, it might be to do with that. Because quality wise, it actually seems perfectly good. Five to 10 mil sockets, just, just standard old sockets. Uh, adapters for the sockets, some Allen sizes, and obviously you can add extra heads in here if you want things that you don't have. Uh, flatheads, Phillips, and then you've got Torx bits here, which is quite handy to have. And also remember that, okay, and there's not that many Torx bits on motorcycles, but you might need to fix something else that's got something on it, and Torx is used in all sorts of places. So that's that little bit, and in here I have loads of sundries to try and help with little jobs, like Reel of electrical tape. You can think of a million places you might need that. A couple of meters of duct tape wrapped around a piece of aluminium. Again, duct tape. It's better than having a whole roll with you. Some copper wire. Now, if you're in a situation where, for instance, you're, I don't know, your exhaust hanger breaks or something and you need to tie up your exhaust, it's great having zip ties and duct tape and stuff like that, but you can't wire up an exhaust with plastic so the idea of this is that should I be in a situation where I need to hold a bit of an exhaust up or something like that if it's really hot this can do that job. Then I have a bag full of random fuses both big and small of different sizes that hopefully if I have a fuse pop on me somewhere I have an option to shove one in although most bikes do come with spare fuses in them. This is a handy little knife that actually belongs to my tire kit so let me just quickly talk about the tire kit in fact no I'll talk about the tire kit afterwards I'll just put that here but yeah handy little knife. Then I've got some zip ties. I should get some bigger ones than this, thicker ones, longer ones, because that'd be much more useful, but this is all I have at the moment, and you do need some small ones, so I'd leave those in there anyway. And the last thing is this 
emergency cable repair kit for like replacing your clutch cable. It's got two whole clutch cables in here and some well, a multitude of different adapters that allow you to fit it to whatever bike you need to. So it's a way of building yourself a new clutch cable should yours snap. Before everyone starts going on about, you can ride a bike without a clutch. Yes, you can. But if you're in the bottom of a green lane and you need to get to the top of the green lane, trying to do that without a clutch is not easy. Not saying it's impossible, I'm just saying it's not easy. And I would rather spend 10 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever, even if it's an hour, putting together a new clutch cable to get me out there and ride it out than have to try and deal with that. So with all that stuff, other than adjusting the preload of the suspension, I have every tool that exists in the normal tool kit, plus all the extras you'd actually need to get down to things, plus some supplies to fix some things. So now I can get on to punches, because obviously that's one of the big stoppages you can get on a motorcycle, is getting a puncher. One of these rope repair kits is absolutely fantastic. They're not expensive, you get the reamer, you get the tool to put the rope in itself and the little knife to trim them off, but as I keep that in the other kit because it's going to be handy and I don't want to always have to go in here. Although I have realised there's quite a bit of extra storage in here I could use for some other bits. If you get a puncher, you basically ream out the hole and you shove one of these sticky cords through it and it will seal the hole very well. These are supposed to be a temporary repair, but I'll tell you this, I have a couple in my back tyre and my XJ6 which have thousands of miles on them and they're perfect. Don't advise you to do that, I'm just letting you know they're a really solid fix. Obviously, in this kit currently, I don't have any way of reinflating a tyre and that's a really important thing I need to cover. I guess I'm going to have to get a CO2 little inflator and some canisters. You could maybe use a run of those like high pressure small hand pumps, but I feel like it's going to take hours to get that up to any kind of pressure, although it would take up less space and obviously you wouldn't run out of, of the amount of times you can blow up tyres. There's also the electric options I know out there, little electric travel pumps, but they do tend to still be quite long and quite chunky. So yeah, I, I think I'm going to get some CO2 inflators to put in here. So if I carry this and this and get those tyre inflators, as you can see, that is a small package with a lot of functionality. Yes, it's bigger than a standard toolkit, but it gives you so many more options. And let's not forget, another one of the reasons why I need this to be so small is if I'm going green lining, I have very limited space and I also need to take this with me for me. Because obviously this is far more important than this. This isn't just a first aid kit. This isn't for um, you know burns and, and little scrapes and bruises. I don't care about that if I go, go green lining. This is actually a trauma kit. So this has got things like uh, severe wound dressings, coagulant stuff, uh, tourniquet, stuff like that. Things that will save your life. Because at the bottom of a green lane, if you've got no phone signal and somehow I come off the bike and I don't know, break my leg or get, do something that causes some severe bleeding, I need to look after myself down there. And obviously, I know a lot of people don't think about stuff like that, but it's really important to think about that because it could really help you. It turns a, a nightmare situation into just a very bad situation. So as you can see, that would fit nicely into the bottom of a rucksack. It's not too thick, it's not too wide. Uh, I've actually just noticed that those two things together actually are about the same size as this. And so if I got another one of these bags, I could fit all the stuff that's in here plus more uh, in the same sort of space. That's probably something I should do. But anyway, as you can see, that's not too much space. It'd fit nicely in the bottom of your bag. It's not too heavy, it's a couple of kilos. But there is so much functionality for the bike here and for me here that I think this is a really good thing. I haven't seen any companies make anything quite like this for most cyclists. Um, you know, a toolkit specifically designed to have everything you'd need for a bike generally and take with you. If there are any companies out there that do that and you want me to review your product, please get in contact. Email is in the, the description of the video. I would be really interested in reviewing some tools from this idea of being small but functional because it's, it's very different to a big overbuilt spanner for every single size. You don't have that luxury. If you're interested in any of these items, some of them are available in my Amazon store. It is an affiliated store, so I did, do get a little kickback from that if you purchase from it, but it's a quick way of connecting you to products which I use and trust. But of course, for every person, and it depends what you're doing, you, you could do this for mountain biking, you could do this for a motorcycle, you could do it for a car, although with a car, obviously, you get the option of actually carrying a reasonable tool kit in your boot, like a full-on Halfords multi-tool box. So there you go. Hopefully that'll be helpful to someone if you're considering doing a similar thing like this, or if you hadn't considered doing it, it's probably not a bad idea to put something like this together. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe if you're new here, and if you'd like to help support this channel, please consider doing that through Patreon, links in the description. Obviously, normally I'm out riding bikes and doing things, but 
This is really important and it's been in my bag for the last few videos and I felt a lot happier, especially when I was green laning, knowing that if anything went wrong, other than the tires, because I haven't got the inflator yet, uh, I would be okay. Wait, that wouldn't work because the DR has got tube tires. That's something I've literally just realized the DR has got tubed tires and you can't use rope plugs in tube tires. It doesn't really work. You can try, but it's not gonna work. So I guess punches are out of it when it comes to green landing. I guess I should take the XJ6 instead then. <laughs> anyway, you can see where I'm aiming this. I just hadn't thought of that before. Anyway, catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.